This is a story of co-creation. It's a story about trust building between a South African government department and civil society organizations. Many South Africans in the room may well be familiar with the notion of a rainbow nation. This was the image that was used to depict the euphoria that would lead us into a democratic dispensation after 1994. At the other end of the South African rainbow lay a promise of equality, a promise of quality health, access to education, and a range of the fundamental rights enshrined in the Constitution. It was also a promise of accountable governance of the country's financial resources. A promise of open, inclusive decision-making where all people could be involved. But we aren't there yet, far from it. I live in the Eastern Cape, a province arguably the poorest in the country, riddled by high levels of unemployment and inequality and debilitating poverty. A province in which service delivery is poor and where many people have limit, limited access to and involvement in decisions that have a direct impact in their lives. It's also, positively, the province where arguably one of our most famous leaders was born, the greatest proponent of, of open government, Nelson Mandela. Despite really strong public finance management legislation and a good number of committed public officials and high levels of budget transparency, it does still seem, it does still seem that corruption is slowly but surely eroding the promise at the other end of the rainbow. It also seems that in addition to this, many South Africans are being left out of the decision making process um, and don't have a voice, the very people meant to benefit. For several years now, the National Treasury has sought to engage civic actors in the budget and the budget process. But despite these engagements, and as I say, high levels of fiscal transparency, there does seem to be a chasm between that and public participation. So in partnership with the National Treasury, a group of civil society organizations came together to develop an online budget data portal called Vulega Mali. Loosely translated, Vulega Mali means to open up the money or to open up the coffers. The objective, to go beyond transparency and to involve the users or the ultimate users of budget data, to empower civic actors to make sense of, make use of and interrogate what the state puts out in, in terms of fiscal information. But getting there wasn't easy. And the exciting element is the fact of many civil society organizations slowly to come back to the table and engage in the process of informing the development of Vulega Mali, which was launched not too long ago, 2018, in response to the country's OGP commitment to open budgeting. But the journey was a challenging one. Many civic actors were heavily jaded by what they, what they felt might be a waste of a waste of investment or wasted investment of time and resources in a process that could likely just be a tick box exercise by another government department, which would be meaningless in the long run. More perniciously, other actors were very, were particularly skeptical about engaging with a surveillance state, a state in which many journalists and CSOs were being spied on, further eroding trust. Lastly, political instability, and what is now well-publicized internal battles within the ministry also likely placed very important officials, reformers, under severe strain within the ministry. So what has this shown us? It's shown us that reform has to be supported, not just from within government, but very much from outside. It's shown us that more than engaging and making sure of a diversity of voices, that we must embrace even the least likely seeming of reformers, whoever they may be. But the innovation lies not in the technical tool itself, the fantastic budget data portal. In my opinion, the real innovation lies in the quality and the form of co-creation that we've taken. 
that, while largely organic, has been one way of interrogating the various ways in which real open government could really look like. So the Bulega Mali team consists of a range of government departments led by the National Treasury, as well as a group of civil society organizations with diverse backgrounds, interests, and focus areas. So around this table, do we have a shared perspective of meaningful participation? The answer very often is no. But the important thing is that that's not where the debate ends, and that's where the debate shouldn't end. The Vulega Mali project also sets out a very ambitious set of objectives. Ambitious in, and time consuming, resource intensive, and often, more often than not, politically complex. A former member of the project team once used the following analogy to talk about the innovation and the complexity of the project, Dr. Kay Brown. And she said that the, the project was like making chocolate when you have no idea what chocolate is supposed to taste like or what, even, or what it should even look like. And that can be very frustrating, even with the best laid plans in place. That's why we need very meaningful relationships based on mutual trust and respect. But those relationships are also what's needed to ensure that vibrant and robust debate is supported and doesn't throw a spanner in the works. That takes time to develop. It also takes time to develop the kind of meaningful, inclusive participation that we seek to ensure around the country. And so, ultimately, one of the most exciting and inspiring elements of this project hasn't been so much the shiny tool, which it, which it is, and I encourage you to go online. It has been, in fact, the relationship building and the paradigm shifts that have happened along the way in our ways of working and, and understanding. It's been the inclusion of a much broader range of civic actors who are slowly coming back to the table. It's been ensuring that we engage beneficiaries and users of data and communities who would never otherwise engage with public data across the country. So ultimately, by building trust, we can reignite our rainbow. Thank you.